Hi and welcome to Plain Jane Tutorials. Um, today I want to show you how I'm going to make over this um, old bench seat and I'm going to give it like a really uh, rustic look, um, kind of look like the paint's been peeling off over the years. I want to show you a really simple way that you can do that. So um, first thing I'm going to do is give it a wash and um, then we'll get some paint on it. So I've just used a mixture of um, white vinegar and water to clean it um, and that's just to break down any kind of grease that's on there um, and look, look how dirty the water is. So that's just shows you how important it is to wash your furniture before you paint it. Um, so that's all being washed now um, and I've taken off the handles. Um, so uh, now we're ready to get painting. Um, now, to me, this is a really rustic, kind of um, country style, farmhousey style piece of furniture. And um, we're looking to do a two colour finish here. So I'm going to go with a classic combination of green and white. And we're going to do an undercoat in the colour mallow. And then the top coat will be in the colour um, gum boots, which is a really gorgeous, gorgeous green. Okay, so I've got a pot of mallow here. I've decanted it into a separate container. It's, um, so mallow is the art sort of off-white. It's, um, it's not yellowy, but it's, it's not um, a bright white either. So because we're doing a bit of an antique look on this, I wanted more of an off-white. Um, so this is mallow, and I'm just using the Plain Jane Oval Brush. Um, and when I'm applying the paint, I'm going to be um, trying to create texture, basically, because we're going to go for a, a rough textured finish. So I'm not trying to put it on really smoothly. I'm going to paint in all different directions. I might sort of stipple the brush a little bit and um, just try and get some texture into the paint. So this is just the first coat. We're not too concerned about it. Just getting some colour on there and, um, and then we'll uh, play with some more colour after that. So because we want a textured finish, I'm just moving the brush in all sorts of different directions. I'm putting the paint on fairly thickly, um, crisscrossing the brush, and even you can sort of do a little bit of stippling. We're going to do some more of that in a minute. Um, but it's really, you know, for this sort of finish, I'm really not worrying about trying to keep it um, neat and flat. Okay, so um, this is dried overnight. It's had about um, one and a half coats of mallow. Um, and yeah, it looks a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> but don't worry, it's gonna get messier. Um, and I always say when you're painting like this in layers, you really can't worry about what each individual layer looks like. You have to just let it be messy. And I promise you it will all come together in the end. So um, we're gonna put another coat of mallow on, but we're gonna add some texture into it this time. So I'll just show you how I do that. Okay, so I've decanted my paint because uh, obviously we're gonna mix the texture into it. So um, you don't want to mix that into your nice tin of paint. So that's why I've decanted into a separate container. And I'm just going to be using the Plain Jane Texture Medium, which is basically a, a mineral powder, which adds texture when you mix it into the paint. Um, so for this technique, you need to use about um, equal parts powder to paint. So I'm just going to gradually spoon it in and mix it into the paint so that we've got a really nice thick texture. And I'll show you sort of roughly what we want it to look like. You can wear a mask when you're doing this because it is a little bit dusty. more. OK, 
Okay, that looks good to me. So hopefully you can see that that is a really thick, gloopy texture now. And that's what we're going to stipple all over the piece to add those textured peaks. Okay, so I'm just going to stipple this on all over the piece and sort of create peaks of paint, basically. So we're going to start up here. I'm going to let it be textured, see how it's um, sticking up like that. Um, and basically where these uh, peaks are is where uh, we're going to create a chippy, worn kind of look like the paint's peeled off. So when you're applying the paint like this, think about where you want those areas to be and I would suggest it would be in areas that you think you know naturally wear over time so for instance here I'm doing it around these drawers because if this was an old piece of furniture they would have got a lot of wear and tear I'm just going to go all over the piece now applying texture So just a little tip while you're doing this as well, I'm using an oval brush here and uh, we don't want circles like that. So um, I'm just gonna, anyway, just kind of keep rotating your brush and making different marks so that you don't get repetitive um, circles. That's if you're using an oval brush, if it's a flat brush, you'd sort of have um, lines, but you don't want kind of repetitive marks that look like someone's just dubbed it on with a brush. And I'm going to purposefully have some uh, areas that have got thicker texture and uh, some have got thinner and then I'll leave some patches that don't have any at all as well. Okay so it's been drying um, overnight and um, I'm covered in paint because I've been tinting paint. <laughs> so um, anyway now I can get on with the next coat. I'm just going to show you how the texture has dried. Hang on a sec. So you can just see the texture in the paint and I've applied more here around the drawers um, and then less down here and up here I've got it really nice and thick here because basically where this texture is is where it's going to look really aged. So when I was looking at this piece of furniture I was thinking you know if, if it had been used Probably around here would have got more worn maybe and here where people were sitting um, so I put a bit extra there and on the, the arms maybe where people resting their arms and, and here the back of the bench where people would be leaning so I've tried to um, put the texture in areas where it would naturally um, be worn and aged so the next step is um, to paint the whole thing all over, over the top of the texture in um, gumboots, which is this beautiful green colour, really kind of rustic um, green. So I'm going to do two full coats in this colour and let it completely dry. So that's the first coat of gumboots and you can see that I've just Put it on pretty thickly but where the texture is if there's little bits of white um showing through i'm not too concerned because we're actually going to be bringing more of that white through uh, later on when this is all dried so we'll just let that dry and then um, we'll do another coat okay so it's absolutely freezing and it's pouring with rain so i've got about seven jumpers on here at the moment uh, but the paint is dry and um, so we've got two layers of gum boots on here and now we're going to start sanding back and bringing some of the white through. Um, so I'll just show you how I'm going to do that. Um, now you can use an electric sander which is obviously a lot quicker and easier but I'm just going to do it by hand and I'm just going to start off with an 80 grit sandpaper and then I'm going to work my way up to a 180. Um, so I'll just show you how I do it and you'll see all the um, white coming through and it looks like um, all the paint's chipped off. Okay. 
So basically where we're sanding back those raised bits, the, the white paint underneath is showing through. I'm just going to wipe it off with a damp cloth too, because then you can get rid of the dust. And it also deepens the colour a bit, so you'll see what it looks like when we've actually got the wax on. Quick tip if you're distressing your furniture is to do some areas more heavily than others so that um, you'll end up with a much more pleasing effect and it'll look, look more authentically aged too. So I just find the best way to get rid of all that dust that you've created is just get the vacuum out and give it a good clean off. So you can see that in the areas where I had applied the textured paint more thickly, like here, um, there's more of the white showing through. So just remember when you're applying your textured paint, think about the areas that you want to look more distressed and put more of the texture there. And then when you sand back, you'll get more of that underneath colour coming through. So, um, so it all feels smooth now, but it still looks textured because you've got the two different colours. Um, now, when I was distressing, I was sort of trying to bring back, if you've got, you know, lines like corners and edges and things like that use them because they give a bit of definition to the piece so definitely try and um, distress over those edges and um, like I said try and um, not distress the same amount all over the piece so kind of have more areas that are more worn than others. So I've um, sanded this whole thing by hand, which, you know, is a bit labour intensive. <laughs> so definitely you could use an electric sander, which would make it much quicker. Or if you are going to do it by hand, um, get a sanding block and then it'll be much quicker and easier to do. Um, uh, and I, yeah, so I'd started with 80 grit sandpaper all over because where, where the texture is really thick, you really need to sort of sand it quite hard to get it back. But um, then I had the 180 to soften it once I'd um, flattened it down a bit. And then also around any kind of um, corners or edges that I thought might distress back too much to the wood if I was a bit rough with it. That's where I used the 180 grit sandpaper on there. So it's good to have two different grits and then you'll get a feel for, for how much sort of pressure you need to put to, to get back to the um, colour underneath. So now there's the fun bit, my favourite bit is waxing because we're going to put some wax on the piece and the first thing that will do is like totally bring the colour out um, but then we're going to use some of the dark brown antiquing wax to make it look really really old and um, that's my favourite thing to do so here we go. So we've got the Plain Jane um, clear wax and I'm just going to apply it with a chucks cloth and that's just going to seal the paint, deepen the colour down and then after that, we can play around with some dark wax on there. Now, just see how it's bringing the colour out. That's why I love doing this so much, especially with these stronger colours like gum boots. It just kind of, I don't know, it completely brings the colours to life once you get the wax on there. Okay, wax is on, so, well, clear wax is on. And while that is drying, I'm just gonna put the handles back on because for the next stage, we want to start aging it up and um, that's we'll be using the dark brown wax. And to do that, you really need to have all the hardware back on because then you can sort of really make sense of the piece and where it would um, get worn so you can age it up in the right places. So, you know, around handles is an area that would definitely get, um, worn so we'll be using the dark wax around the handles so I'm going to put the handles back on now I'm going to let the clear wax dry at least for a couple of hours and then we'll um, go on with some dark brown wax you can just see just with the clear wax how um, it's totally brought that gorgeous green of the gum boots out and um, really deepens the colors down so very happy with that
Okay, so I've just got the uh, dark brown wax and I'm just gonna use one of these little detailing brushes and I'm just gonna use it in the um, detail. So I'm not gonna put it all over the piece. I'm just gonna put it into the corners and um, around the handles and that sort of thing. And um, it'll just give it that real sort of age look. So I'll just show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some wax on the detailing brush and I'm just gonna poke it into the corners. Now remember, we've got the layer of clear wax there that's already sealed the paint. So this dark brown wax isn't actually going to soak into the paint and change the color of it. It's just gonna sit on top. So it, although it looks like I'm putting a lot on, I'm actually gonna be able to wipe it off. So I've got a um, soft cloth and I'm just gonna wipe it back so that it's only sitting in the details. I'm just bring it up close and show you. So you can see the difference between that drawer where I've added the dark brown wax into the details and then up the top. Huge difference. So now I'm just gonna go all over the piece, adding the dark brown wax into those details. And that's it, a beautiful aged rustic finish. I think it looks really pretty and I hope you love it too. And if you have a go at it, then please let me know how you get on.